Okay, so if you haven't heard, President-elect Joe Biden has made his picks for SEC chairman and the chairperson for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And those picks are Gary Gensler. We're talking about Goldman Sachs alum. Gary Gensler, also the former uh, Commodities Futures Trading Commissioner. And also uh, Rohit Chopra, who is a Federal Trade Commission member. Those are the two picks. And these picks are really important because they indicate where Joe Biden's going and where the next administration is going when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain regulation. Uh, also, if you haven't been paying attention or didn't notice, if you haven't really looked into his pick for uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, you'll understand that she goes with this entire theme of more regulation. She's not against blockchain. She's not against cryptocurrency. She's for it, but she's all about regulation. And that's going to be the common theme between these three picks. Regulation, regulation, regulation. Now, normally when people hear those words, they think negatively. They think this is going to hinder the market. But in all honesty, the cryptocurrency market does need some level of regulation. It just doesn't need to be overregulated. So we'll see how far they go, how far reaching they will go. But let's keep this in mind. The United States can't regulate the entire cryptocurrency market. It is an international market. It is not like the New York Stock Exchange. It is not like a regulated stock exchange. No. In fact, if you want to compare something in the crypto world to a stock exchange, you're talking about Coinbase. Coinbase could be the equivalent of the New York Stock Exchange. But again, even with Coinbase, there are no open hours and close hours because this is an international free market. Keep that in mind as I'm speaking about everything. But before we get into why this is good or this is bad or why these picks could be negative or positive, let's listen to what they had to say over the past year or two about cryptocurrency and blockchain. Well, I think it's the, the technology, blockchain technology, which the public all, all know is underlying Bitcoin, has a real chance to be a catalyst for change in the world of finance. And that's because it moves data and it also applies code, computer code, across a decentralized network. So I think that's why you see the likes of Sheila and Gary Cohn, and even I'm teaching at MIT blockchain technology, and the class is crowded. There's a lot of people that want to know about this technology. So how do you regulate it? Well, it's really important, I think, for this, if it gets broad adoption, if we really think the crypto world's going to be part of the future, it needs to come inside a public policy envelope. That means we need to guard against illicit activity, and yes, we need to protect investors. The crypto exchanges, big exchanges like Coinbase, need to really come within either SEC or the CFTC, the agency I once uh, was honored to chair, uh, inside of something to protect investors. Do we have the personnel within the federal government to actually be able to understand this enough to really know whether there's fraud going on or what's going on? Well, it's always a challenge. That was true when the Internet came along in the 1990s as well, and you're right. But I don't think that means we give up. We still should try and protect investors. And then there's more confidence in markets. And where there's confidence in markets, then more people can participate. What are the likelihood of a crypto cryptocurrency futures options market? Well, we already have something called a Bitcoin future on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. There's even uh, uh, futures on some other contracts called uh, Ether uh, as well on overseas markets. Now, you're asking whether it be an option on that future. I think it's in our... It's in our future, to excuse the expression, but it's somewhere in the next six or 18 months. I think it will be there. So assuming we will have the regulation you described, we're sort of like back in 1933 with securities. You know, Where should that regulation come? I mean, you're obviously from the CFTC. You believe in the CFTC. But why there rather than the SEC, for example? Or maybe there's an entirely different uh, new regulatory body. I'll even be regulator neutral as well as technology neutral. I think the pure cash cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin mm -hmm need more protection and probably more protection than frankly even the oil markets or corn and wheat whether that's the cftc or the sec i'll be neutral i think the cftc has good skills so if you're paying close attention to what gary gensler said he's not saying that bitcoin is bad or cryptocurrency is bad in fact he's saying look you can't of course regulate blockchain that's impossible it's a technology but cryptocurrency should be regulated and he said more than oil more than oil, but he also said these regulations would take years to adapt. It would take years to create them. However, there's always a starting point, and usually, usually the starting point is lighter than the finishing point. He also said you don't want to hinder growth. 
So keep those things in mind as you listen. Now, in the last panel, you talked about the U.S., where there's a different uh, set of agencies, one overseeing securities and, and another with derivatives and another the tax authority. One of the things that all government agencies have to challenge ourselves to do is that when there are new paradigms to deliver data or transactions, whether it's financial services or other sectors of the economy, we do have to push ourselves to be able to quickly identify where the concerns might be so that we can communicate to the marketplace effectively on how to address them. Now, if you listen closely to Rohit, he's speaking a lot about fraud again in regulation. He's speaking more about the know your customer rules and making sure that blockchain moves forward, cryptocurrency moves forward, but there's little secrecy in these transactions. And that's what's needed for institutional adaptation. Uh, risks that we see to potential collusion on, and anti-competitive practices to obviously financial protections to consumers and of course data protection. So we are all challenging ourselves uh, to think about them. Now that we've heard from our future SEC chairman and the future chairperson of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, we should have a better idea of where things are going. It's not a doom and gloom speech from either side. It's not saying it's a perfect world where us in the cryptocurrency community and the market, we would love for less regulation. We would just like for adaptation on an institutional level, but that doesn't happen without regulation, okay? More banks, more financial institutions, more businesses will not get involved with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and, and altcoins unless you have more regulation because people don't want to get sued by the SEC, similar to what's happening to Ripple with XRP. It doesn't mean that XRP is going to be labeled as a security. In fact, that's not even part of a part of the lawsuit if you look at the paperwork. We have to consider, though, that more regulation will change the market, but again, it will help to spur growth in the market. I'm not a person that's for a lot of regulation. Again, I don't like regulation, but I do recognize, and I said it in my videos years ago when we first started talking about cryptocurrency, one of the benchmarks of cryptocurrency becoming a more mature market is regulation. So that's what's coming in 2021, and that's what's going to make 2021 an epic year in cryptocurrency, because once you roll out regulation, you'll have more adaptation. You'll have more businesses that will involve themselves in the cryptocurrency market. As said in the video, you will see ETFs coming in 2021. You're going to see a lot more trading, a lot more activity with cryptocurrency in 2021 because the Joe Biden administration will bring regulation. Now, you can tell me in the comment section if you disagree, if you agree, how you feel about it. Let me know in the comment section, but make sure you do one thing for me. Like, subscribe, and share. I want this conversation to go as far as possible. Hey, you can disagree with me. You can call me an idiot. You can agree with me. I just want to hear what you think on the matter. I've been trading in cryptocurrency for the last five to 10 years, but I'm not an expert. This is not advice for you, financial advice to say, uh, you know, go this way or go that way in terms of investing. This is just information that's going out and how I interpret it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I appreciate you for joining me for this discussion. Talk to you soon.